Alright. <clears throat> oi, oi, oi. Okay, for uh, this tutorial, we're just going to uh, uh, um, uh, come in here and uh, make a nice little car paint material for our uh, Jaguar here. This is in uh, its low poly res state. And that's just uh, so I can use the IPR and we'll be able to see it update much faster than if I used a sub D. So we can do this for uh, creating our shaders and it'll work just fine. So uh, first actually let me go ahead and gonna turn off cameras and our viewport so we don't have to look at the uh, drawings anymore. could just go in and delete the image planes if you're completely done and you know you're not going to need them anymore. But I'm just going to go ahead and hide them because I'll probably go back and add the grill to the front here and also one here in the back and maybe even an interior but whatever. Anyways, getting off my tangent now. Let's go ahead and create a, uh, let's just make a blend material. I already have a blend material applied to this. So in our hypershade, we're just going to go ahead and assign this blend material there. And that's it. We're done. That's our car shader. Not really. Um, see, it's taking a little while to render here. And since this is taking so long to render for such a low res image here, if we IPR this, it's going to be somewhat laggy as well. So let's just select our car and then we'll come under here, display, hide, and we're just going to hide unselected objects. So now the only thing we have to worry about is the actual body of the car. And we don't have the other elements here like the wheels and the tires and the glass slowing us down. So now we have our blend here. Let's just go ahead and rename this and we'll just call it car paint M for material or S for shader or T for texture, whatever you want. Whatever floats your boat. So now that we have this here, what do we need to do now? Well for car paint it's a little different than uh, most surfaces and then you get sort of a Fresnel effect and it, it's going to be more reflective on the sides that are facing away from the camera and so to uh, do this Maya has a nifty little node that we can create and under general utilities you'll see sampler info node or you can just come here to create new node I think as we wait and wait and there we go so just come over to our utilities sampler info and the sampler info node has a nice little facing ratio thing we can plug into our material which means uh, parts that are facing the, the camera more directly that are more uh, perpendicular to the camera we can have those attributes be different than the ones that are running more parallel to the view of the camera and facing away from it so that if we were to spin this maybe right here the side would be really reflective and the front wouldn't be as we turn here now the side's not very reflective and the front part here would be more so it's just a cool little car paint effect we can do by using the sampler info. So, uh, let's go ahead and get this started then, shall we? First, I'm going to uh, come in here and I'm just going to add a reflected color. I'm just going to add a real simple environment texture and just make it the environment sky. So now, if we render this out, 
You can see we have the blue sky and the uh, gray ground plane where the horizon is towards the bottom of the car. And so that's going to sort of fake our what would otherwise have to be ray traced. So we'll just use that for, for testing or setting up our shader here. So we don't need to see that. Just move this out the way. Okay, and so now we have that. Let's come into our our car paint material here. And for reflectivity, we're actually going to use set driven key. And you can go ahead and plug it into reflectivity anyways, or use a blend color, which is another way I'll show in a little bit. But you won't get quite the same control. So now with that done, we'll, uh, with this selected, load driven, as it is, select sampler info, load driver. And we scroll down here, we see our facing ratio for the sampler info, which is under driver. Scroll down here, we look for reflectivity. What do you know? It's not there. Um, by default, you're going to uh, not see it under your driven car paint M. You won't be able to set it up for that because it's not really keyable. So we come under options, we see this list keyable driven attributes. And there's a check mark by it. We want to uncheck that. And now we'll show much more that we set for. So now we select our reflectivity. So make sure that only reflectivity and facing ratio are selected. They are. Nothing else. And now we're just going to hit key. Isn't that lovely? Now we have a relationship between our reflectivity and the uh, sampler info here. So now what we need to do is go into our graph editor. And actually it's animation editors. So window animation editors, graph editor. And we go ahead and select our blend, right click, and just graph network. And now we we'll see we have this new node here. And you can see it's reflectivity output going into a car paint M reflectivity. And this is uh, our set driven key right there. So we'll select the input. We hit the F key to focus in and we see this little tiny dot right here. So now we see uh, this is like a just a regular graph like you would see in you know old elementary math classes. So we have our reflectivity for our car paint material over here on the left side along the y axis. And sampler info it's three for this scene for whatever reason. But uh, that's plugged into the or the facing ratio here going along the bottom the its axis. So now we're just going to add a key. Just middle mouse. So add add keys tool, middle mouse click, and it'll add our key here at the one. And you see it's at one and point oh oh or point oh five five one, whatever. We'll just put it at point oh five. And we'll change this first one here at the zero for uh, facing ratio. And we'll set this at set a point five, make it point eight five maybe. We'll see how that looks. And now we don't want this to be perfectly smooth. We don't want this to be a straight line here. This is not gonna quite look right. Let's uh do an IPR render of this real quick. So just middle mouse button click in the viewport hit the little IPR icon up here in case you didn't already know now you do 
And we'll zoom in here, we'll click and drag this. Let the pixels load. And now we want to uh, come in here, maybe adjust the fall off a little bit. And we'll see we can't. Why can't we do this? It might give you a headache if you try and figure it out. It's annoying. Why? Why? I don't know. I'm annoying myself now, so I'll just be quiet. So anyways, if we click our car paint M, reflectivity, well we have our two inputs here now. What we want to do is click weighted tangents. And so now with our, uh, you could have just clicked on this, I mean no, this one. And there's our weighted tangents. So now we got that checked. And come in here, select our key, select the handle, and now we can adjust these. So now we're seeing how, how the curve falls for the reflectivity. Maybe we want to make it nice and smooth. We're going to see it change up here. Just change ever so slightly. And maybe we want to uh, make it red. Everybody likes red sports cars. Don't they? Of course they do. So there's our lovely red sports car now. And we can see how it's reflective right here, but we can't really see it follow so much here along the front. Which is how we want, that's how car paint actually reacts. And you'll see the same effect in most shiny objects actually, like glass. will give you that sort of same effect. And so I'll just close this out now. And what you might want to do is come in here and maybe tweak these a little more. Just put them whatever you want to. Just mess around with them until you're happy. And you get it looking somewhat decent. Okay, and let's get that light out of there. So that's one way to uh, go about making sort of a car paint shader. And it's probably the best way that I know of because you get pretty nice control using the graph editor thanks to the set driven key. Another way is, we'll just create another blend here. And we'll assign it to our car. real quick and cameras aren't being shown yet the image plane is still in the viewport oh hey, isn't that lovely so let's just delete our image planes for the purposes of this tutorial so uh, up here at the top of our hypershade under the cameras tab you see our image planes let's just delete those and they're no longer there which is very joyous alright so now we're going to uh, go in and create another sort of a uh, car shader just a different way to do it and uh, this time we're going I'm just going to create a new node and now we're going to uh, under utilities tab, we're going to create a blend color and another sampler info. And for this, let's just uh, plug in the uh, blend colors to the uh, actual color channel of our blend here. You could uh, create another one and plug that into the specularity and another one and plug it into the uh, 
more, I guess, the color, like I already said. Or reflectivity, actually. I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes. It sucks. Okay, anyways. So now we have a wonderful default blue mixing with red blend, which gives you this purple color, which actually is kind of cool. And now we're going to plug this in to the blend color. So let's just take the facing ratio, plug it into the blender, and close that out. And now you see we sort of have that cool car looks different at different angles look going on here. So you see those cars that look green, and then you walk up closer to them and they turn purple. We can get that effect using this. And it's kind of a cool effect, actually, I think. Maybe we'll go ahead and try the green. Normally they're pretty dark colors, though. And maybe a real dark blue. So now even as the car, if you were going to animate the camera going around the car, this here would not always appear green. It would it would turn into the blue that we're seeing up here. And uh, it would give that same effect all the way around the, the car. The color would constantly change depending on how much of the, the surface is facing the camera and how much of it is facing away at a different angle. And you can come in here and make this any color you want. Turn it back to red and get that effect. And maybe now we'll go ahead and we have that our environment sky texture here from our last shader still. Let's just plug that into the reflected color here. So now you can see the the reflected uh environment sky there still. Close that out. And maybe we'll create another another blend colors. So uh, this time I'll just go under general. And no we won't. Where is it at? Color utilities. Blend and we'll do the facing ratio under here again. So just I'm just middle mouse button dragging. I probably should have said that earlier. But I didn't. So live with it. Alright, and now we're just going to plug this into. Click other again. Alright, we'll do Blender. And maybe we'll plug it into uh, Reflectivity. And we'll see, we already lost the reflection there. Let's turn these into black and white. Start out with each streams. And I can't tell if it's updating still or not. Doesn't look like it's really doing anything. So let's try another IPR here. And isn't that lovely? I don't see my IPR doing anything right now. And this happens with IPR every once in a while. Don't ask why. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't like me. But anyways, we're just, uh, you mess with the uh, white and the black. And maybe this should be black, this should be white. I'm not really sure. You can test it out by plugging this into the color. And now for reflectivity, it looks like that would be about right actually. We would want the uh, top color being darker. So 
that it's more reflective on the sides here. And anyways, we messed with that a little bit. And now we can go ahead and plug this back into the color. I think. And this back into the reflectivity. There's sort of a another car shader for us, and that time we get the cool little different color at different angle, and you can plug that into other attributes, and you can actually make it so that it's a different color at different light intensities, and you can have it so that you can just do all sorts of different cool things with it, but you really have to just play around with it. So, anyways, there's that car shader. And you may also want to come in here. You could do the same thing with the shader by using sampler info. You'd already use the one that we have here. And maybe just plugging that into a, another blend color node that we create and then plugging that into the color. It would do the same thing. Only you would get the reflectivity would be by this instead of the blend colors. Or you could use another set driven key to adjust the color and so the reflectivity. And you can just do, you can interchange all these techniques so that maybe we want to use the second one, the blend colors for the reflectivity, and uh, the set driven key for the color, or vice versa. Or use both these for the color, both the set driven key for the reflectivity and the color, and even the specular. It can go on and on and on. Actually, there are just so many combinations, but uh, we're gonna go over the we're going to go over another way. If I can continue to talk, so now let's go ahead and create yet another blend. And why did that happen? Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Oh, you just love it, though. So, anyways. Actually, here's my blend. Throw this back onto the car there. And another node we can use here to interchange between the set driven key and the uh, the blend colors and the sampler info. I'm going to add yet another node that you could swap for those instead. And it's new in Maya. And uh, it is this uh, clear coat. So general utilities, clear coat. If you're going to create new node, you see it there as well. So it's clear coat right here. Are you sure I clicked on it? Where'd my hypershade go? Things are just disappearing all over the place for me. I don't know what I'm doing. So I believe it's this one right here, which has a really cool icon over here. I don't know why I'm not seeing the icon here, but it's not really that important now, is it? So anyways, we have this. We can plug this into the color. We can plug it into the uh, specular. We're just going to plug it into the reflectivity again, I think. We'll see how well this goes. If we can even plug in the out value to reflectivity, and we can, yay! Alright, so that's good. Go ahead and plug this into the reflected color again. And we're just going to IPR this out again. Which should be working now. see it and so now we can just come in here and we can play with our index and the scale and the bias 
And just mess around with it until you see something that you like. That there is really reflective. And so this is just another little way to go about it. This is a new node in Maya 4.5. At least I think it is. I don't remember saying it before. If I'm wrong, then just uh, hate me. I don't care. But anyways, if it's been here all along and I didn't know about it, and you did, then you're just that much better than I am. And feel free to... Uh, notify me how much better you are that's okay but if it's new then I don't have anything to worry about so anyways instead of just sitting here and continuing to waste your time let's go ahead and create another one of those nodes another clear coat node here and maybe this time we're going to plug it into the specular color I really can't talk today, can I? At least I want to plug it into the specular color. Oh, I can't. Doesn't that figure? Let's, uh... I guess I can plug in all three. No works for me. And so now we can have the shyness not be directly related to the uh, reflectivity. Let me bump it up nice and shiny now. Maybe this time instead of a red car we want a, uh, a brown one. No. Oh, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, I'm thinking more blue. I feel like blue. That's really bright blue. But I just went to the auto show, and blue was in this year. It's all the rage. Everybody wants a blue car. But yeah, anyways, make it whatever color you want. Maybe the guy drives a pink Jaguar. Or yellow. Maybe a sickly green. Lime like. Anyways, so that's those ways to uh, create a car shader. You would of course want to go in and, well maybe not of course, but you may want to go in and add some maybe different uh, um, 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 maps to, uh, maybe make it flaky, like a flaky paint, so that it's sparkly. You should know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody should learn to speak how I speak, and not make any sense at all. But, uh, now for the last way to go about creating shader, we're just going to, uh, to another new shader that's in Maya and we're going to use the ramp shader and what we're going to use this for is to actually create a tune shader so we'll just assign that there because tune shading well it was pretty big a few months ago so naturally I'm just now getting into it I'm behind on everything, it seems like. It's not fair. Maybe I should whine more. Okay, anyways. So, maybe we'll go with this many different shades. Go ahead and start with the left. We'll make that black. And this is not going to look all that pretty on here. I have low anti-aliasing. I have a low resolution model. And this is a low resolution render that's just been zoomed in. 
So it's not going to look very smooth. You can already see the jaggies right here. And right here. Well, maybe you can't, but I can. And we'll go with the red car again. But it should be dark for here. Now maybe this will be the bright red. This will be the uh, highlights. Maybe we'll make it more like that. All right. So you can already see these are going to need to be slid over to the right quite a bit. And again, before you get started on the tune shader, you should have all your lights set up in the scene. I don't even, I think I just have the default lights set in here now. Um, let's just go ahead and add some simple three point. I think it's what, yeah, this one. So, let's redo this in the IPR. So you want your lights in your scene before you start messing with the, uh, the shaders, generally. And you also want a calibrated monitor, which is pretty important. And I'm hoping this thing's calibrated. It should be. Anyways, if it just turns out looking ugly on your screen, then maybe it's just your monitor. That's my excuse at least. And that's not doing anything, so slide this over more. So now we can see where the highlights are, maybe even more, make them smaller. And now we need less of that red. Like the black over. And so now we're just tweaking all this. And I know what I forgot to do. I have this on light angle. I want this on brightness. Silly, silly me. At least I think that's what I wanted. Well, all the lights in my scene have really thrown everything off now. And so if we push that in, we're going to see... Not a lot. I think that just means all my lights are a little too bright. Drop the intensity. Or maybe I just don't like these lights in here. I'll go back to the way it was before when it was somewhat working. Yeah, you really just have to come in here and mess around with this a lot. Until you get a, a decent looking tune shaded car. And it may not always be easy or fun. But by golly, it'll work. Okay, that'll work for now. And maybe now we'll come in here. Show all the stuff that we hid. Close this out for now. Just look at those little scoops or vents and the mirrors and we'll sign that there. 
we do this IPR again and we'll do a quick little thing for the glass So anyways, there's our tune shaded car thus far. Probably needs more tweaking on the ramp shader. But, uh, that's up to you. So now we're just going here and create another ramp shader real quick. And now we're just going to mess with the glass here. Select the glass. Other things to keep in mind are uh, will the uh, nodes work in mental ray if that's what you're rendering out in? Because right now, mental ray for Maya is not integrated to the best of you know its ability. It's uh, still got a lot of loose ends. The Tune Shader, I believe, will render in Mental Ray. While the Clear Coat node, I don't think will. Just as Sub D's will not. So, I'm pretty sure the Clear Coat and the and Sub D's will not render out. But if you use the uh, Sampler Info and the Blend Colors, that should work fine, I think. So just do some testing. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the tune shader works fine though, or the ramp shader, I guess. So we're we'll going to turn this to none, turn it to brightness, and go ahead and create two more of these. Let me make it black. And this one will make sort of a grayish blue. And this one will just be a light blue. Maybe not that black. I guess you probably want solid black for complete shadow, so yeah, we'll leave it black. Okay. Now we'll bring this down some. See how it's looking over here. Maybe it would make this even darker. Another shade that's not so dark. Something like that. And maybe we even want when it's all white. Or maybe we'll just make it nearly all white. So there's our uh, tune shaded car. The glass I think has too many of these. Maybe just something more like that. And you can, if you want sort of an airbrush look, you can change the interpolation back to linear. We can see how it's more blue over here, and it fades to this light blue. And we'll do the same thing right here, or you can make it smooth, whatever you want, however you want it to smooth out. And now we can get that sort of airbrush look. And we can do that with the body of the car.
I'll just turn that on to smooth. Turn this on to smooth. And so now it's got that airbrush look to it. And that's pretty much it for these shaders. Um, you can take what we talked about with the uh, car paint shaders up here. And say so you want to use the uh, blend color or the keyframe, and you can plug that into a set driven key. And you can plug that into the uh, transparency so that the way actual glass works, it's more transparent as it faces the camera or as it faces your eye. And then it becomes sort of less transparent as it turns away. And you could plug that into the transparency for the glass. And so it's actually pretty similar to the way we did the car paint for that Fresnel effect. And uh, you can use that to a uh, glass as well for the reflectivity and the specularity and also the transparency for the glass. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something. Probably not.